This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. When superpower nations are discussed, the nations that usually come to mind are the US and China. Rarely though does Indonesia get a mention. Nonetheless, while they don't currently have the economic power of China or the military might of the US, there are reasons to think that Indonesia might become a superpower of sorts in the future, which is exactly what we're going to explore in this video. So, to actually evaluate Indonesia's potential superpower status, we first need to understand what a superpower is. The term originated in 1944 to describe the US, UK and Soviet Union. Lindman Miller argued that there are four basic axes of power which determine whether or not a country has superpower status. Military, economic, political and cultural. So, using this taxonomy, how does Indonesia fare? Well, let's get cultural out of the way, because Indonesia clearly isn't a cultural superpower. For context, the paradigm case for a cultural superpower here is the US, whose international cultural exports include everything from Hollywood to Coca-Cola. As things stand, Indonesia has a limited cultural footprint, and there's little reason to think this will change. Alright, on to the military. The Global Firepower Index, which ranks countries based on their military power, puts Indonesia as the 15th most powerful country on Earth, which, for context, is in between Iran and Germany. When we dig down into why this is, it quickly becomes apparent that the reason for this is because they have a large population, which in turn means that they have a lot of available manpower. As of 2022, Indonesia has a population of just over 275 million, which puts it as the fourth most populous nation on Earth. They have the 12th highest number of active personnel of any country on Earth, too, at about 400,000. Interestingly as well, they have the third highest number of people reaching military age per year, roughly about 4.6 million people. This means that the number of people able to fight a war is increasing very quickly. Now, while this might sound impressive, this is only really important if they were to fight a conventional ground-based war, akin to the war in Ukraine. While this is a possibility, other forms of military conflict are equally, if not more likely, and Indonesia doesn't fare so well here, largely because it doesn't have that many armoured vehicles, ships or aircraft. However, the Indonesian military is on the up. In 2021, a new draft regulation from the Indonesian President's Office outlined $125 billion of investment in military modernization up until the mid-2040s. Since this was signed, they have purchased 36 F-15EX fighter jets from the US, which will cost about $22 billion, and additionally have purchased six Frem and two Mastral frigates from Italy. Nonetheless, even taking into account their military modernization project, the Indonesian military is unlikely to reach superpower status in the foreseeable future. But what about the economy? Could Indonesia become an economic superpower? Well, here's where things get a bit more interesting. As things stand, Indonesia is not yet an economic superpower. According to the IMF in 2022, Indonesia has the 16th highest GDP in the world, at about $1.2 trillion. Indonesia's GDP has grown remarkably fast. In 1998, it was just $115 billion, which means that it's grown by more than tenfold in the past 25 years. This economic growth has already worked wonders for ordinary Indonesians, and the poverty rate has fallen 75% in the past 10 years. Indonesia also has favourable demographics. While other East Asian countries suffer through a demographic crisis, Indonesia has a large and young workforce, with 26% of its population under the age of 15. This young and tech-savvy population has driven a digital boom in the country, and Indonesia has a digital industry worth nearly $100 billion. On top of that, Indonesia's economy is well-placed to take advantage of the energy transition. Transitioning away from hydrocarbons like oil and gas towards renewables will require lots of stuff like solar panels, wind turbines and batteries. And producing all of these things will require copious amounts of metals and rare minerals. Indonesia has lots of these commodities, especially nickel, which is used to build batteries. In total, Indonesia has about a quarter of the world's nickel reserves and is the world's largest producer, generating 38% of global refined supply. 
Indonesia's share of production is expected to grow in the coming years, mostly because it hasn't extracted as much of its reserves as other nickel producing countries like Russia, Canada and Australia, but also because it's investing in its domestic refining industry. Essentially, instead of exporting nickel and making bank, they're engaging in a policy known as downstreaming which involves banning the export of raw materials in order to force companies to invest in refining facilities in Indonesia. At the moment, this seems to be working. Foreign investment has reached an all-time high, including $20 billion of nickel-specific investment. The Indonesian government is also doing something similar for its other metal exports, including tin, bauxite and gold. Analysis by The Economist suggests that by 2030, Indonesia will probably be the fourth largest producer of green commodities in the world, behind only Australia, Chile and Mongolia. You get the idea. Indonesia is due for an economic boom in the coming years. And while it's unlikely to ever match America for consumption or China for manufacturing, it'll be an export superpower of some sorts if things go to plan. Anyway, on to the final element of being a superpower. Politics. Located just south of the strategically important and contested South China Sea, Indonesia's geography makes it a key player in the emerging superpower contest between the US and China. Indonesia has a long-standing history of neutrality, so if they play their cards right, they could solicit capital from both China and America. Indonesia has remained neutral on other geopolitical issues too, including the war in Ukraine. For example, Indonesia described Putin's invasion as unacceptable, but has also criticised Western sanctions on Russia. In a perfect demonstration of their peacemaking credentials, their president has met Joe Biden, Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin and Vladimir Zelensky this year, something that could well be unique in 2022. Anyway, you get the idea. Indonesia is emerging as an axle in the Asia-Pacific, and if things go to plan, it could become a kingpin of sorts in the US-China superpower contest. In conclusion, while Indonesia isn't yet a superpower in any real sense of the word, we should expect its geopolitical clout to increase in the coming years. But in the meantime, if you want to stay up to date with news from around the world, then be sure to subscribe to The Daily Briefing, our show where we quickly break down the four stories you need to know about each day. Now, you can watch on The Daily Briefing YouTube channel or listen by searching for the podcast. But if you want the extended version of the show every day, that's an extra five to ten minutes every day and an ad-free experience, then you'll need to sign up to our streaming service, Nebula. There you'll find exclusive TLDR videos which never make it to YouTube and all of our latest videos ad-free. Now if you're interested, I have good news because we've partnered with CuriosityStream, the home of the best documentaries online. Thanks to them you can get both streaming services, CuriosityStream for the docs and Nebula for bonus TLDR for less than $15 a year. That's a wild deal and a 26% discount on their already low prices. So get yourself a ton of documentaries and exclusive content from your favourite creators, including the Daily Briefing Extended Edition, by signing up using the link below. Thanks for your support.